picture you are looking at is a classic in nutrition history. It was taken in Egypt in the early 60s when a team of researchers set out to investigate the causes of a widespread condition in some African and Asian countries known as hypogonadal dwarfism. On the left you can see an adult and on the right what based on height and build looks probably like a 7 year old kid. In fact it was 16 years old but only 50 inches tall. Besides severely stunted growth, hypogonadal dwarfism is also characterized by inadequate development of reproductive organs, impaired immune function, anemia, and mental retardation. The researchers hypothesized that this condition resulted from a severe deficiency of zinc. A staple food of this population was unleavened bread. Whole grain flour does contain zinc, but it also contains phytate that binds it, making it scarcely available for absorption. During the fermentation process to make bread, enzymatic degradation of phytate is promoted thanks to the microbial enzyme phytase, which increases zinc availability. But if you only eat unleavened bread, most of the little zinc in your diet will not even be absorbed. To test their hypothesis, our researchers just gave supplemental zinc to some of these kids and like magic, they would immediately start growing and developing. Zinc was the one thing that they were missing and all they needed to be able to grow normally. Luckily, clinical deficiencies of zinc are extremely rare nowadays and mostly related to a genetic defect in zinc absorption which is called acrodermatitis enteropathica. Suboptimal intake of zinc, on the other hand, is unfortunately very common in many segments of the population and it can result in growth problems, attention span deficits, impaired immunity and increased risk for hypertension, atherosclerosis, coronary heart disease and diabetes, all of which results from a pro-oxidative, pro-inflammatory environment, low nitric oxide levels and impaired insulin signaling. As we will see in a minute, Zinc is involved in all of the above. It is needed for optimal immunity, antioxidant protection, anti-inflammatory protection, nitric oxide production, and insulin metabolism and signaling. Zinc is a cofactor of about 200 enzymes involved in just about every major metabolic pathway, including cell growth and differentiation, reproduction, nutrient metabolism, and immunity. It is needed to optimize vision and in particular to activate vitamin A in visual pigments and it is needed to maximize taste buds acuity. Indeed, one of the first symptoms of zinc deficiency is a diminished taste perception. Zinc is involved in antioxidant protection. Together with copper, zinc is a cofactor of one over three major antioxidant enzymes, superoxid dismutase. It is also necessary for metallothionine, which helps to toxify heavy metals and protects against oxidative stress by binding copper and iron. Zinc is a cofactor of nitric oxide synthase, which produces nitric oxide to promote blood vessel vasorelaxation, blood pressure regulation, and blood fluidity. On top of all that, Zinc is also an intracellular signaling molecule. For example, it has an anti-inflammatory function by inhibiting nuclear factor kappa B through PPAR alpha activation, and it regulates insulin production and metabolism. Last but not least, zinc plays a fundamental role in the regulation of gene expression and apoptosis. More than 2,000 transcription factors that work to regulate gene expression require zinc to maintain their structural integrity and bind to DNA. These elements are called zinc fingers. The recommended daily allowance for zinc is 11 mg for males and 8 mg for females, although some experts deem the current RDA to be suboptimal. The best dietary source of zinc is seafood, and oysters are number one. One oyster alone covers the daily need for zinc, much like a serving of clams or a quarter pound of calf liver. Meat, fish, eggs, whole grains, nuts and legumes all significantly contribute to our zinc requirement. Instead, milk and dairy, refined grains, fruits and vegetables are poor sources of zinc. Fermentation, germination and soaking of whole grains, seeds and legumes 
all result in partial enzymatic degradation of phytate, thus increasing zinc availability for absorption. The upper limit for zinc is 40 mg. Although zinc does not cause serious acute toxicity symptoms, chronic use of zinc supplements above the upper limit can lead to copper deficiency anemia because zinc and copper compete for absorption and one will displace the other. Excess zinc can also have an indirect pro-oxidant effect by displacing copper and iron from metallothionine. Pharmacological doses of zinc at about double the upper limit are used as a remedy for common cold to reduce its symptoms and duration. Such treatment may be helpful for some individuals, but should never be used for more than three or four days and discontinued if it causes tachycardia, nausea, or diarrhea. High-dose zinc supplementations for a longer period is sometimes used along with antioxidants to slow down macular degeneration, but must be supervised by a physician and combined with copper supplements given separately to prevent zinc-induced copper deficiency.